Welcome to another video. Uh, some of you may remember this one. I had this on a sitting trip with me for about four weeks and I noticed some design flaws. For example, uh, the plugs got pulled out, the cables were too long and I have way too many boxes and way too long cables between them to uh, use this properly. It worked well but it was unpractical. So I came up with this. This is uh, I would say version 3 of this whole setup. Um, it is um, a Raspberry Pi 3 which is here and down here you see an Arduino and now it has a dual G uh, AIS receiver and the Arduino has a GPS breakout device which pipes the GPS data into the uh, Raspberry Pi and so I can see I can get the, the, the GPS data directly it has now a display and here is a power supply and as well below the display is a, a sync 18 ampere hours battery here are some status LEDs and for the connections, this is the, the power plug with the fuse. Here is the AIS input for the antenna. As I said, a dual GPS, uh, AIS receiver. Here is the Ethernet uh, connector for the, uh, for the Raspberry. I can use this as, as debug now. On the other side, I have here a second display which I have here. This one I can build anywhere on the boat. Then I have my Navtex here, which is this box. Uh, then I have an external GPS mouse and a Wi-Fi antenna, which is this one. And here is a, a NEMA output for my um, VHF for the ship. So let me switch it on. Now I have just um, there is no power connector so it runs on battery. Here is the uh, voltage of the LiPo battery and now you see uh, the GPS position, course, speed and how many satellites. Here is um, this small hole here. There is a BME, BME 280 uh, pressure, humidity and um, temperature sensor. So now I have 25 degrees, uh, 990 hectopascal and the GPS antenna is an external one. So if I unplug the GPS antenna to internal antenna I have to plug here, it's internal. Now I plug it uh, back and it should use the external antenna. The internal antenna has a lot of dampening because it's uh, way down here. And yeah, that's it almost. Here is um, a charging device. Let me plug it on. Now you hear also a small fan. The fan runs only um, while the battery is charged. Here is a, a yellow LED and once the uh, battery is full the fan gets switched off. Let's switch on the Raspberry. You see here the Raspberry is firing up. It takes a few seconds. Okay, now the Raspberry is running here. See the blinking LED. The Navtex is also running. You can see it here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Here is the reboot. And then I have a small timer. 
I found two default BT sticks. Um, I gave them devices, device numbers, and here I started the first one, then I started the second one. Um, then the, I noticed that the tracker is not running and so on. Um, it depends all on a valid time, which I get from the GPS, and so I create the GPS socket because the um, the Raspberry is connected with a um, DDL to USB stick, and the data is collected by a C program, which connects to a local port and the uh, PHP script co gets the data using the local port and so I can also distribute it to Kplex it's a bit complicated okay um, after this I got my time and then everything starts the GPS tracker, the IS cache System time seems valid, so I um, I know I have valid time connecting to SQL server and so on. Then uh, the Navtex is starting. Then I restart the Kplex. The Navtex is uh, receiving at 518 kHz, and um, then it says everything is ready. Let's do some serious shit over here. CVU um, usage, um, the position, my GPS fix with nine satelli satellites right now, my eleva elevation, direction, and so on, the pressure, temperature, and humidity, and here that everything is running. Another nice gimmick uh, I told that I have a NEMA output, and so I can go to my um, VHF it makes some noise now don't worry. because I don't have MSI set and so the um, the VHF gets also the position over this output I can prove it if I disconnect this plug So now no GPS information. I plug in this connector so, and the VHF has a connection using uh, the GPS uh, input of the of the uh, back connector here. Yeah. So this goes onto my ship. I can also show you maybe how the LEDs work. If I switch it off, it takes some time, about 12 seconds. Now the Raspberry shuts down and now it's off. And once I switch it on back again, I have my LEDs here. If I GPS fail, if I have a fix, if my Kplex is running, if the tracker is running, if the AIS cache is running, if uh, the AIS devices are found. Um, now it starts up, it's just LED test and here is some information LEDs if I... Yeah, now it starts up, if I got a track point if uh, I got a AIS signal, if I got a Navtex nourished and uh, Navtex um, message story, and if I pipe my AIS cache to a device. So now it started up. Now it's of course an error because the website was gone. And now everything should be back to normal. I received quite some Navtex messages. This is from the Mediterranean Z. Um, G is 
I think UK, England. Uh, what do I have here? You, you is also Mediterranean Sea. R is Netherlands Coast Guard. I have also the BME 280. So I can view the pressure and temperature graphs over the past seven days now. So the pressure is rising to 995 hectopascal. This is my temperature graph. Uh, jumps a bit around. And here's the humidity. Yeah. So that's I think all for now. This is uh, I bought a sailing vessel. This is the VHF which goes in there. This goes also in there. I have also here the voltage of the um, Nipo battery. So if I unplug the power you should see the voltage sinks and now it runs on, on battery only if I plug it back I see my output voltage it's uh, so high because um, I power the Raspberry and um, the charging device using these diodes here, these two here. Right. Now you see it, these two. Uh, so the maximum current can go onto the uh, battery over the power boost 1000. And of course, I can switch off the, the display. I have also my second display here, which shows the same information like this display. Uh, I have also a button here, which uh, where I can um, adjust the backlight. Now it's only one, two. Okay. And if I press the button long, oh, not long enough. <laughs> now the backlight goes on a timer, uh, it will switch off after 10 minutes on both displays, of course. Yeah, that's pretty much all. Um, I'm going to show you the basic uh, principle how it works in a small presentation how the, all the components work together here 